Geralt can have all sorts of skills in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Sword skills, science skills, alchemy skills, and eating skills. They don't exist. Seriously, I'm not joking. So today we're going to go through the best skills in The Witcher 3 for any Geralt player and go through some kind of general build ideas. So let's go. Let me know in the comments how your day is going. I'm going to give you roughly three skills in each category that are arguably the best for like any kind of general build that'll fit within anything. So you can have one of the mutations and then each section of the skill for like those bonuses that you get when you match the mutation color with the skill tree. But if you're looking for some sort of min-max, like really highly specialized build, then you probably would want to double up and say focus on two of the trees, say whether it be combat and sign and make some sort of like spell sword build or go like all in into alchemy and combat something like that but we're really focusing just on like the generally the best skills across the board for each of the categories so you could just put this into like one build and it would still function but you know if you were making a specific build you want to like specialize a little bit more we'll start with the combat tree itself now the combat tree is all about combat and using your sword skills as well as some parrying and dodging that kind of stuff now the first decision you want to make in this tree is whether you are going to focus on light attacks or heavy attacks and pick the corresponding skill for muscle memory for light and strength training for heavy. This skill will increase the damage of your light or heavy attack respectively by a certain percentage depending on how many points you put into this. But regardless of your build, if you're using these attacks regularly, you're going to want to pick one of these. You really only want to invest in one of these because there is certain armor as well as other skills that will buff either your fast attacks or your heavy attacks. So you want to lean into one of those two different lines and then use those skills for that reason. Arrow deflection is also a very useful skill that you can definitely use in the early stages of the game. When you parry, you then block arrows that are coming towards you. Bandits are terrible at doing this. You can replace this much later down the line with like a protection from the rune right guy so you don't even have to do anything with it. You'll just automatically deflect arrows but well worth getting in the early stages. And then back onto that heavy or light kind of scenario, you either want to pick Whirl or Rend. Whirl is a amazing skill linked to fast attacks where Geralt will just spin his sword around constantly and deal tons of damage to everyone that's around him. It does consume stamina while this is active and then Rend is I guess kind of like the heavy version of this where Geralt will like lift the sword up it's a very slow attack and then he'll like drop it down it will deal tons of damage and ignore additional defense from the enemy it's a great skill as well but again it depends whether you're leaning into heavy and light and we'll talk about a little bit more of that when we get into some of the general skills and focusing on how to do that the sign tree is next and this is all about those magical signs that you can cast with Geralt. There is a couple here that we're going to call out. We're going to start with the Igni skill Melter Armor which for Igni which is a fire spell this will allow you to weaken the enemy's armor up to 75% when you do max it out. Any chance you can get to lower the enemy's armor will just increase your damage overall and Igni is such a powerful spell just on its own so buffing this in any particular way is a good thing to do because it's so useful in so many scenarios and basically along those same lines Exploding Shield is a skill related to Quen. Quen is your protective shield and it's essentially like the best sign in the game and even if you're not buffing it with any like specific skills you're probably going to use quen to some regard exploding shield is just like the great like first option for this and then once you can get access to it active shield will give you like an active version of it where you like hold the button down and anytime enemies hit it it'll actually give you vitality as well it is a fantastic skill to just get health back in combat if you're struggling especially on higher difficulties you just need a little bit of that barrier around yourself get some vitality back and keep rolling delusion is a skill that can be used in combat to make it harder for enemies to reach Gerald and like like stun them that sort of thing but the main purpose of delusion is actually out of combat because you'll get certain unique dialogue options and in conversations where you can use axie and in some of these scenarios you need to have delusion equipped and to either like level one or level two depending on what that kind of like charm i guess like skill is so it's important to put this on for most builds if you're looking to be some kind of sweet talking gerald you will want to put this on the alchemy line is next and the alchemy line focuses on a couple of things alchemy is your bombs so the bombs that you throw at enemies it's also your oils that you apply to your weapons as well as the potions that you consume so there's a lot of different things in alchemy and you would kind of need to think about you know what you find the most value out of you know do you use bombs a lot then if you don't there's not much point in you know buffing the bomb damage same for you know oils which you absolutely should be using though and same for potions that sort of thing the couple skills that we'll call out here is poison blades is a really valuable skill which will add a percentage chance to poison enemies when you have an oil applied to your weapon and in a lot of those tougher fights well basically all the tougher fights you will have an oil applied to your weapon because they're typically 
basically, you know, those boss encounters with monsters, that sort of thing, and you're going to put that oil on your weapon, so you get that poison chance by putting that on. In that same line, further down in that line, protective coating will then lower the amount of damage you take from enemies that have that of that oil type, if that makes sense. So, say if you've got the Spectre oil applied and you're fighting a Spectre, that Spectre will do less damage to you because that oil is active on your blade, if that makes sense. They just like a really good synergize spells that work together. Frenzy is also an absolutely hella useful skill for like literally any build. So what happens with Frenzy is when an enemy is about to like counter attack or attack you, time will slow down briefly to give you time to either like parry or dodge, that sort of stuff. Really useful build to avoid damage in a lot of scenarios, especially on like say higher difficulties where, you know, taking damage is really a bad thing because it will deal so much damage to you. Synergy forces you to spend a lot of points into alchemy just in order to get it, but it is worth doing as it does increase the effectiveness of mutations in those active slots. So we talked a little bit earlier about how when you apply a skill to like a certain section and match it with mutagen, it'll increase the effectiveness of that mutagen, say like increase the attack power that it's giving you. This synergy skill will essentially do that, but it will increase the bonuses that you get for all of these different sections. So regardless of your build if you're using any kind of alchemy skills this is a really good skill to have because it just gives you more passive bonuses that could be vitality or attack power or sign intensity whatever you've put into those mutation slots this will just make them increasingly more effective the general skill tree is next now don't sleep on the general skill tree like at all we're going to go through a couple extras here because there are so many valuable skills in the general skill line that just do a lot of interesting things that i guess you know for the same regard they're called general because they don't fit within the other categories but they are absolutely well worth using and they're kind of so powerful because they don't synergize with any of those mutations. We'll start with some health regen and health regen is super important especially on death march because you can't heal just from meditating. Sun and stars will greatly increase your health regen during the day and at night it'll increase your stamina regen. So essentially you get a passive bonus just for having this equipped. Now the health regen isn't heaps like it's you know it's nothing to sneeze at any health regen is good especially on death march but it just gives you that little bit extra outside of combat so you don't have to waste any kind of food. And Speaking of that food, Gourmet is like one of my favorite skills in the game. Food and drink regen will go from 10 seconds to 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a long time and you can just then pop one food and then never have to think about it for the next, you know, 20 minutes. And plus you combo that with Sun and Stars and Gourmet, you get that little bit extra health regen as well. Great for inside and outside of combat. Survival Instinct is also pretty good, especially on the higher difficulties. Just give yourself some extra health. Can't really complain there. School techniques, uh, whether it be light, medium or heavy, whichever one you're focusing on here, you want to pick one of these, whether you're wearing the light armor, the medium armor, or the heavy armor. And this coincides as well, whether you're using the fast attacks or the heavy attacks, because the light armor fits better with the light attacks and the heavy armor fits better with the heavy attacks because those armor sets typically buff your light or your heavy attacks, right? So depending on what armor you're wearing, you will want to pick up this school technique. It'll give you bonuses depending on that armor type as well, which just like synergizes with whatever build you're picking up. And so just picking up that school technique is really important. Rage management is also also super invaluable for sign builds. So if you don't have enough stamina to cast signs, you'll use adrenaline points instead. So you can get more signs out more quickly in combat rather than waiting for that stamina to regen. And in that same vein, adrenaline burst can further buff this because it'll increase your adrenaline point gain. So you'll have more adrenaline points to then cast more signs. And then you're not waiting for that stamina regen all of the time, which is the main crux of like signs. And that's how they're balanced is having to wait for stamina. So if you can avoid doing that using adrenaline points like this, it's absolutely absolutely valuable. There is also the mutations, which you can unlock to get those extra skill points that you'll see like in my end game build, there's a couple of extra skill slots there compared to early game stuff. But these are essentially just like extremely powerful skills that whichever one you have active will make those middle skill slots the ha that type, right? So if you've got like a combat one active, you have to put combat skills in them, that sort of thing. Let me know in the comments what your favorite skill is. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Noza and hope you have a great day.